I'm a man of God. Ah, uh, yes, building cars and making mistakes. The two honestly go hand in hand because if you've never not done anything before, how do you expect it to go perfectly the first time? And it's a spoiler alert, you don't. Try being in your first relationship, you will f everything up. And you just, when it comes to cars, you just can't not make mistakes. You end up blowing holes in your fenders because you just wanted to. You end up over boosting your engine because you bought one of the $30 manual boost controllers. You install exhaust that droops on one side because you didn't know that the hangers actually need to be even. You find out that spray paint does not do that well on a duckbill lip. And that polyurethane mold pieces really never have enough strength for what you need it for because when you put the rivets in, it just cracks the whole thing straight up to kingdom come. Now these things all just happen, right? They happen and you're probably already having horror flashbacks too if you've built a couple cars in the past. I cry every single time I write a script like this because it's mostly just my personal stories. I'm Alex, AlexFI on Instagram, and today we're going to be talking about rookie mistakes people make when they go to start building a show car because there's a lot of them and we're just going to talk about it. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe so we can keep making banging videos like this. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, you know the drill. Fitmanindustries.com, which is where we actually spend the other like 10 hours of our 12 hour day working on. I know it's a shocker, okay? From your show build to your daily driver, we got it all. And if you're looking to win some free wheels from Cosmos or free tires from Michelin or free Silver's coilovers, we have a whole giveaway where you can win all of that by picking up a hoodie. It's the hoodie that I'm wearing right now and I don't even wear hoodies. There's a description link below, click it, pick up a sweatshirt, gets you automatically entered to win all of that stuff. Going into a full show build can be a bit daunting, especially if that's what you're deciding to do from the get-go. Since you're essentially trying to make something one of one, because that's the whole purpose really, of a show car. It's gotta be interesting enough to get attention, but not too much that makes people wonder why you would put that on your car. And the first mistake that we would talk about when jumping into making a show car build is not having a vision for you what you want it to come out as. Nowadays, there are these fancy things called computers and apparently they make renders to show you how it will look. People say I don't know how to use quotes correctly, but it's always good to know what the end result will look like so you can actually keep that in mind as you start working on your car. You will be shocked at the amount of times that you'll say, yeah, I wanna just lower it and put some wheels on it and get a spoiler for it, and then what you imagine and what you buy are to pull just way, way two different things. Now, renders for builds have become extremely common these days, and they're actually not that expensive. And with new programs, and apps, even free apps, have been coming out in the past few years and you can just do it on there, take a screenshot and then keep that in mind as you start building your car. When you're in doubt on where you even want to go and you wanna grab inspiration that's unique, our recommendation is to go watch some international car show films to get inspiration, what you think would be neat, and then do that in your local area while still kind of making it yours. We always recommend jumping across the sea because there's some really cool stuff over there and you're gonna be used to a lot of the stuff here. I have to sneeze. <laughs> almost fell off my chair. But once you've decided on the style and the finished look that you're going for, you actually have to, you have to actually like build it, right? The amount of mistakes that you can make here is pretty high and it's almost gonna be constantly. But because we're all about wheels, tires, and suspension, because we're Fitment Industries, we're gonna focus on those bits because there's enough, there's enough of off in that area that you could probably, you could probably stick to that. Now, the biggest mistake that people make when going into the show car building process is messing up the order of their purchasing process. Now, you don't wanna get overly excited and buy wheels and tires and then end up slapping over fenders on it the next day because they had a cool deal on grill tops. Only to add 30 millimeter spacers because now you sit tucked like one of those trucks that you see on the highway. It's got the standard wheels, but it's got the bushwhacker fender flares that stick out like 12 inches. And you're wondering to yourself, that don't look right. Well, jokes on them because yeah, it don't look right because they got the fender flares before the wheels and tires. Now, I guess you could say for legality purposes, but we're not gonna give them any excuses because that'd be lame. It's all gotta match and it's all gotta be in order. We always recommend doing wheels and tires together with suspension close behind if you can do all three within a close timeline. That's gonna be because you can dial and all of that at one time. If you're looking at the build and don't know what sort of wheels to get for the car, think about what look you're actually going for because you're gonna notice that there's a lot of people that like 
the same style wheels. And there's a reason for that, especially on specific platforms. Now, if it's a function style car and you're looking to keep the look function, you'll want to keep your eyes out on thin bent spoke style designs with a deep mounting pad for big brake clearance and a focus on your brakes. You're going to notice that a lot of times the actual where you're going to mount it sinks in super far and then bends out like this. And that's going to be that really functiony look. And you're going to want to contrast the colors with your brakes and you're going to get a primo good looking setup. Now, if it's a VIP car that's blocky and square and you just plan on rolling low and slow, you'll want to go with a busier wheel because the car is inherently not that busy. If you already got a busy exterior because you put a bunch of side skirts and lights on it, you can keep the blocky wheels simple. Blocky wheels that are super busy do best on a simple body style that isn't crazy aggressive on the outside. Another pro tip, more lip generally is going to mean less concavity. So more lip can make it lose aggressiveness or the function style of the wheel. Wheel. But to combine both a function style look with both a show style wheel, go with a step lip on a thin double spoke wheel and it'll give you a little bit of both. That's something that work does really well with their multi-piece wheels. Bing, bang, boom, you're all ready to rock and roll. You got nothing to worry about. And while it is also a fantastic time to build a show car because it's fun, you get to put your personality into a thing. It's like making a painting. You have to understand the timeline that you built for yourself because that timeline that you built, I want you to, I want you to grab it while we're watching this video. I want you to look at it. I want you to look at it. It, I want you to look at me. I want you to look at it. And I want you to look back at me. It's not going to happen. Okay. I'm sorry. And I'll be the one to tell you that because it's just not the rookies that make mistakes. It's everybody. Have you ever heard of SEMA crunch? That is a thing. SEMA never changes, right? It's like the holidays. It never, they never change. They're the same time period, but yet we always rush to get gifts. It's literally the same mistake for the same reason. We set these pretty realistic targets and then we just go right up to it and procrastinate and try to finish it all in a week for a car show. You're going to want to make sure you have some targets, but stick to them. The problem with these deadlines, is that because you want to hit them right away, you actually end up skirting past some smaller details along the way. Ask Archon because they literally just finished the truck that's going to SEMA like 20 minutes ago. That bag of zip ties starts to look really nice and appealing when you're trying to rush through mounting up your front clip. I mean, it's just a bumper, headlight brackets, fender liner, rear splitter, lip, zip ties. It can hold all of that, right? You just don't want to drive it. Set a deadline, but don't try to do it in a season. It's just not a good idea. And you're going to find yourself rushing and not having that much fun with it. But setting a little bit of a deadline is going to help you, otherwise you're gonna have a garage built for 10 years. But once you actually get the car built properly, you've got to set it up the way that you want and you're actually ready to take it to some shows. But if you're scared to take it anywhere, you won't end up driving it, which actually happens to a lot of people. What if all that hard work ends up blowing 10 miles down the road into your trip down south? So then you end up trailering it or you end up just not taking it all and it ends up being too difficult to actually drive everywhere. Try to avoid building a show car or a car to the point that it's useless or to the point that you're just not even driving it because you don't enjoy driving it. Lots of people end up falling out of love with a car because they've built a car they can't drive or they've built a car that is just too difficult to drive. They can't drive it because they've built it undrivable or because they slammed it on the ground and they decided let's just, you know, make it look really nice and just never put more than one person in it. Then they put, forget to put door cards in it. Then they forget to put door handles in it. Then they forget to actually put gas in it. And then you have the BMW E30 that we own. But then they wonder why the I can't believe it's not butter is actually made with because now the car just doesn't do anything and nobody wants to drive it anymore. By the way, we fixed that. You can go watch the video. It's probably somewhere. What you're going to want to do is make sure that you have an idea. And if you do plan to make it undrivable, just own that right from the get go. And here's some quick fire tips for building a show car as well. Over fenders and wide body kits almost always need to be reinforced with a gasket sealer or something on top of the rivets. Rivets pop out pretty often. So remember that. And I'm not just talking about the rivet itself. The actual sealer that goes with it will actually pop out because what happens is the fender will actually vibrate. And over time, those get loose no matter how tight you make those. And if you over tighten them, you'll crack your polyurethane over fenders. You want the splitters to be supported throughout the piece of the splitter. Otherwise, it will begin to droop and eventually catch on something. This happens so often when people only put the two bolts in the corner and then two bolts maybe in the back and then the two tabs. You're going to want to pretty much lock it down in every possible place. Headlight tabs break all the time and aftermarket headlights are no different. The tighter you have your front clip set up though, the better because it's usually what happens is the front bumper or the fenders end up vibrating against the headlights and over time, the weak point are the brackets and the brackets will end up breaking. Relays for your LEDs 
guys, for the love of God, because you just need to happen or it's gonna just look like you're having some sort of like, I don't know, trap party in Italy or something like that. The relays help just keep everything organized. Exhaust hangers do need to be adjusted and if you don't double check it after installation, it's going to be odd when one exhaust tip is an inch and a half lower than the other. This actually happens a lot and you're gonna find out that those hangers usually that you're taking out can be reused if you need to. Interior can and should be just as important as the exterior as you're building a show car because you're in the car while you're driving it. And if you only focus on the exterior and the interior is rough, it'll be easier for you to fall out of love with the car. You gonna wanna have fun with it. Document the build. Just don't make it a job, otherwise it's no fun. And that's the whole point of building a show car is being able to do something that makes it yours and doing all of that sort of stuff while also keeping in mind that it's for you instead of for others is gonna be the biggest thing to do. So what's the biggest tip you have for somebody that's about to jump headfirst into a show build? Drop it below and if you haven't checked out fitmentindustries.com yet, go do that. We've got it all for wheels, tires, and suspension for your cold little heart that you could all possibly want. And of course, if you're looking to win free wheels, tires, and suspension all in one go, because it sounds like fun, you're gonna look in the description link below where if you pick up one of these uh, sweatshirts, it gets you automatically entered in to win. This is the biggest one we've ever done. So it'd be cool if you guys could pick up a sweatshirt. Plus it's cold and it's snowing in Wisconsin, which means that's why we're doing it. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries and we will see you later. Peace.